Richard Moorcroft and welcome to another night in the letters and numbers ring with our two contenders waiting for the bell. Let's get ready to jumble as we say hello to our team of puzzle pugilists. And in the red corner, the mathematical mauler, Lily Cerner. Hi, Richard. <laughs> Actually, uh, do, do you have any, you know, fighting skills? Ooh, I always like that phrase, um, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Might be able to float like a butterfly, I'm not sure about the stinging part. <laughs> All right, we'll hold that for later. Welcome, Lily. And in the blue corner, the dictionary destroyer, David Astall. <laughs> You could sting like a bee if you needed to, couldn't oh, you? Oh, you know me, I don't pull any punches, Richard. Uh, always come out swinging, that's my go. <laughs> well, those are actually... Those are, those are lovely fighting phrases that creeps into language. Have you got any more of those? Oh, or? In fact, uh, English is rife with boxing phrases, um, you know, from all sorts of things. Saved by the bell or, you know, down for the count. Good on you, David. And to two people eager to be named tonight's letters and numbers champ. First up, back for his fourth night, is our carryover champion, TV writer and director, Matthew Thomason. Welcome back, Matthew. Thanks, Richard. Matthew, Matt. Now, one of the things uh, that I know you've done in your TV writing and directing career is a lot of those travel programs. And when people see them on the screen, you know, it looks fantastically glamorous. But is it actually a glamorous life? Uh, look, it's very enjoyable. It's not the touristy thing. You don't get time to sit and do the touristy thing. On the other hand, I was shooting in Pompeii one day uh, and our guides said, let's break for lunch. We didn't go where the tourists had their lunch. We went behind there. And the owner took us aside, cooked us a special pasta that he had ready for us, served us homemade wine. We ended up having lunch in a 3,000-year-old gymnasium. A 3,000-year-old gymnasium. <laughs> yes. That sounds like a heck of a good fringe benefit. It was excellent, yeah. Really good, good to see you back again. Good luck tonight, Matthew. Thanks, Richard. And ready to challenge Matthew is Matt Bolton, a database administrator who currently works for Oxfam Australia and owns a geodesic dome house. So, welcome, Matt. Thanks, Richard. Now... Geodesic dome house is an interesting piece of architecture. Why did you decide to build one of those? What appealed to us about it was the, the, the unique structure of it. It's actually two domes and the structure is made up of uh, triangular sections um, and they make hexa hex hexagons and pentagons and they form the shape of, a, of like a soccer ball. Sounds fascinating. Great to have you here and good luck tonight. Thank you. In fact, good luck to both our contestants, Matthew Thomason and Matt Bolton. Let's get underway, as we always do, with the letters game. You're the carryover champion, Matthew. You know the uh, the drill. Choose some letters for us, please. Hi, Lily. Hi, Matthew. Welcome back. Thank you. Can I start with a consonant, please? You certainly can. Let's start with N. And another consonant, please. R. And another, please. L. Uh, a vowel. E. Another vowel, please. A. Uh, another vowel, please. Another E. A consonant, please. B. Uh, another consonant. T. And another consonant, please. And last letter, T. Thank you, Lily. Time starts now. First letters for tonight's show. How many this time? Seven for me, Richard. Good start by the sound of it. What about you, Matt? Seven also. Excellent start for both of you. Let's uh, go with yours first, Matt. Bleater. And Matthew? Battler. <laughs> <laughs> Bleater and Battler. Well, one's, con one's complaining and one is uh, in the ring there by the sound of it. Bleater is good and Battler is good. It sounds like they both these uh, characters need an enabler, which is another seven. But there is an eight in here that I found. Uh, I had to check it in the dictionary to make sure that it was uh, legit, and that's rentable. So anything that is rentable from a deck chair to a house is a possible eight. Excellent word. So great start from uh, both Matthew and Matt. Seven points each. Let's move straight to the second letters game. And uh, Matt, your turn this time. I'd like to start with the consonant things. Certainly. Let's start with D. Uh, followed by a vowel. O. Another consonant things. S. And another vowel, please. E. Uh, go for a consonant next time. R. Another consonant. T. 
Uh, one vowel, thanks. O. And another vowel. E. And finish with the consonant. And last letter, P. And here's the clock. Your uh, first selection on the show, how did you go? I got eight. Eight? That sounds very promising indeed. Matthew, what about you? I also got an eight. Eight as well. So, uh, Matt, what was yours? Posted. Posted, right. Matthew, what about you? Same for me. Posted. Same one? Yes. If, if you could verify, you both got the same word there. So, uh, an interesting word, David. Posted, I presume, look, putting up posters in the past. Unfortunately, it is not a verb. Um, I, as uh, unlikely as that may seem, therefore we cannot have the past participle posted. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to torpedo. Uh, cannot allow you with that. What did you come up with, David? Well, in fact, if you add ES to torpedo, you get nine for torpedoes. You got nine! <laughs> Great work. A really generous mix for a change. Well, well done with uh, torpedoes, though. Great nine-letter word. Um, and unfortunately, no score in that round for either Matthew or Matt. Well, time for this evening's first numbers game. And uh, Matthew, what combination would you like today? No surprises, really. Two large and four small, please. Thanks, Matthew. Two large and four small. And starting with the smalls, four, eight, another four, six, and the two large, 175. The target to reach, 500. Let's head for that target. Did you guess? Uh, 499. One off the target. Matt, what about you? 497. Okay, you're a little bit further away, so uh, Matthew, take us through your method, although <laughs> you're looking right. a little bit nervous here. <laughs> um, 6 times 100 equals 600. 6 by 100 is 600. Subtract the 75 to get 525. Take away 75 is 525. And then if you multiply the 8 by 4 to get 32 and subtract that. 8 by 4 is 32. Subtract so that from 25 is 393, uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. And then if you add the 4, you get 497. Add 4 is 497. 497. Well, I think, Matthew, you declared 499, yes, didn't I did. you? Yes, I did. Unfortunately, uh, because that doesn't actually add up to what you declared, we can't, uh, we can't let you have that one. Which means that, Matt, I think you actually declared 497. Mm -hmm. So take us through your method, please. 4 by 100 is 400, plus the 75. 4, four by 100 is 400. 475. Add the 75 is four, 475. Uh, and, uh, no, it looks like I've used the 4 three times, rather than twice. OK, well, unfortunately, uh, neither Matt or Matthew on this occasion came up with the uh, result. How did you go, Lily? I, I managed to get there. All right. <laughs> take, okay. it, take us on your journey, please. OK, now, 4 divided by 4 is 1. Um, 6 minus 1 is 5 by the 100. It's 500. Oh. oh, oh. Deceptively simple, but you've got to be able to see it. So, uh, well done, Lily. But uh, unfortunately, as I say, no score for Matthew or Matt in that round. That means that they're absolutely level pegging at this point. Seven points each. We're heading into our first break and your first word mix tonight. It's Salty Pup. And the clue, an unusual bill back after the break. Yeah. 